Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing the electron beam machining process uh, uh, continuation. So already in the previous video, we just started discussing the major components and briefly we discussed about the working of electron beam machining process. So here we will be continuing uh, the electron beam machining. So uh, just uh, I want to continue this video with the, a small uh, uh, the diagram what we have uh, discussed so that it will be easy for us. We can able to see like the major components uh, uh, where a tungsten filament uh, with this kind of the cathode grid and below that uh, an anode uh, where uh, uh, we have uh, a focusing lens, deflection coils and magnetic lens we have and all these things is kept inside a, a vacuum chamber. So I think we are all very much clear with this thing. So now even uh, we got to know like how exactly this is working. Now here you can able to see this, this uh, video is uh, continuing with uh, how uh, the excess material is removed from the workpiece. You can able to see like uh, uh, when the, uh, the stream of electrons, uh, when it is directly hitting uh, the surface of the workpiece, uh, either it melts or vaporizes. We can call it, I, I mean usually this process is taking place due to the surface erosion or else like a high pressure uh, the electrons uh, uh, charges are creating. So the melts or the vaporization is gradually uh, progresses because of the continuous supply of the, the stream of the electrons. Finally the molten metal if any of the top of the front which is expelled from the cutting zone by the high vapor pressure at the lower part. And uh, the whole process is carried out in a vacuum chamber uh, because uh, already we discussed in case of any uh, pres presence of the gas that leads to the further contamination or the further pollutant and that will stick directly on the workpiece so that the output water we are looking for we may not able to get. So here the gun in EBM process which is used is a pulsed mode. So holes can be drilled in a thin sheets using a single pulse. For thicker plates the multi pulses would be required. So why vacuum chamber is required? So even we can call it as a, a, a separate topic. So as we are aware the entire electron beam machining process is occurs in a vacuum chamber because a collision between an electron and air molecule causes the electrons to scatter and thus lose their energy and cutting ability. You can able to see electron beam in a vacuum where the beam is moving straightly as per uh, the direction we are provided but you can able to see when the electron beam which is uh, supplied in the presence of air means where the molecules has been uh, uh, collided with an electron atoms. So the electrons were uh, scattered literally. So the, among all the important components uh, uh, you know like the very important component which plays a vital role in this whole, whole process nothing but uh, the electron beam gun. So now we will uh, just focus only on this electron beam gun where uh, we will be supply and all the, as you are aware uh, this electron beam gun means uh, beam gun means basically it consists of yeah, the filament rod uh, uh, filament rod uh, that is the cathode and the anode uh, setup. So this, uh, all this together, we know like a cathode is negatively charged and the anode is uh, positively charged. You can able to see this is the cathode cartridge and this is the anode cartridge and this is the bias grid. I will tell you what is happening and all this setup is kept inside a, a vacuum chamber. So here I will be supplying an electricity of temperature 2500 degrees Celsius. So the, like over the, the power whatever I am supplying to this tungsten cell filament at 2500 degrees Celsius it could able to emit the you know like uh, uh, the electrons and that electrons I will be uh, you know like a through from the cathode because it is negatively charged since the electron, uh, electrons are getting excited that I will be allowing it pass through the uh, you know like a anode that is negative to the positive charge and here you can able to see this uh, there is something called uh, uh, what is this? Uh, this particular part, the magnetic lens. You can able to see what is the purpose of this magnetic lens means. Uh, so what the stream of electrons which is uh, coming out uh, uh, from this particular electron beam gun, uh, where we will be uh, we will be making uh, the cross section uh, of circular. So circular to make the electron beam uh, uh, stream into the circular cross section, we are allowing it to pass through the magnetic lens. You can able to see this. And one more information is uh, by means of allowing it to pass through these kind of uh, uh, setup that is the aperture and the electromagnetic uh, uh, coils and uh, all these things where we can able to increase the stream of <coughs> electrons of velocity like uh, 
two thirds that is 60 to 70 percent of uh, light velocity we could uh, able to increase so that is uh, another reason why we are allowing uh, uh, this stream of electrons uh, that is uh, which is having a circular cross section as a result of this magnetic lens to pass through this uh, what is this lighting system for the alignment even this is also present inside a vacuum chamber so now uh, after passing through this electromagnetic uh, coils and the deflector coils uh, you know like uh, the, cro the circular cross section uh, electric stream of electron beam that we will be allowing it to pass through the workpiece which is kept in again inside a vacuum chamber uh, the reason also we just know we discussed the, the major purpose behind uh, you know like uh, uh, doing these kind of setup is uh, the, the electrons if you are in the presence of air if you are allowing uh, uh, to you know like uh, 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 to hit through the workpiece means uh, the electron beams uh, uh, the electron particles it will it will get collided with the air particles that is the presence of oxygen or nitrogen some other gases to avoid all those things only we are providing even the workpiece in the table everything will is uh, covered with uh, uh, you know like a vacuum chamber and the simultaneously a carrier gas is uh, uh, continuously provided uh, so the purpose of that one means in the vacuum chamber only uh, it will uh, remove off the excess materials uh, uh, i mean excess material means are the vaporized or the molten material which is present uh, uh, as a result of this electron beam uh, uh, you know like uh, uh, collision and that will be uh, you know like uh, used and here in a simple way you can able to see this so this is an uh, a supply uh, system where we can able to see this uh, a cylinder a tungsten rod you can able to see like and we are calling it as a hot cathode and uh, because of when i'm heating at uh, temperature of 2500 uh, degrees celsius uh, so a cloud of electrons uh, are getting emitted uh, from this uh, filament so now these elements uh, are being uh, diverted to an uh, a, a, what is it a grid cup so grid cup so that it will travel uh, towards the uh, what is that anode so the purpose of passing it through the anode means where it is uh, accelerating so and even uh, the flow of electrons has been uh, controlled uh, in these things and the potential difference of 50 to 100 uh, kilo volts is maintained between the filament and the anode so if 550 five that is 50 to 150 kilowatts uh, the speed acceleration speed is maintained and then it is passing through the uh, focusing uh, anode so that it will uh, accelerate uh, the electrons uh, to move at a speed of uh, uh, 60 to 70 percent of speed of light and finally we will getting a electron beam uh, that uh, we can able to see it here so the expansion in the inverse we can able to see the electron beam uh, gun is the heart of uh, electron beam machining process uh, so the basic functions of an any electron uh, beam gun are to generate free electrons at the cathode and accelerate them to a sufficiently high velocity and to focus them over a small spot size so cathode is generally made of uh, tungsten or uh, tantalum such cathode filaments are heated uh, often uh, inductively your temperature of around 25 degrees Celsius, sorry, it is 2500 degrees Celsius, not 25, and heating leads to thermo ionic emission of electrons. So, a combination of repelling forces from the negative cathode and attracting forces from the positive anode causes the free electron to accelerate it and direct it towards the workpiece. So, one of the major requirements of electron beam machining operation of electron beam gun is the maintenance of the desired vacuum. So, you can able to see all those things, the gun uh, in other different way the vacuum chamber and the electron beam gun so the nozzles and the water cooling uh, is also provided separately and this is the boiler and heater so all those things we can able to see so the vacuum uh, is achieved and maintained using a combination of a rotary pump and the diffusion pump diffusion pump is attached to the diffusion pump port of the electron beam gun and the diffusion pump is essentially an oil heater as the oil is heated the oil vapor rushes upward nozzle changes the direction of motion of the oil vapor and the oil vapor starts moving downward at a high velocity such high velocity jets of oil vapor enter in any air molecule present within the gun and this oil is evacuated by a rotary pump through the back lining and uh, speaking about the power supply the high voltage power supply used for ebm system generates voltage of up to 150 kilowatts to accelerate the electrons the most powerful electron beam machines are capable of delivering enough power to operate guns at average uh, power levels of uh, up to 12 kilowatts individual pulse energy can reach 120 joules per pulse 
and to avoid the possibility of arcing and short circuit set circuit short circuits the high voltage sections of the power supply are submerged in an insulating dielectric oil thank you